Hello world! In today's video, we'll discover why modulation is used in wireless communication and which modulation technique is used in Bluetooth low energy and Bluetooth devices. Now, this will allow us to understand how radio is used as a carrier for digital data. Now, in the Bluetooth stack, these issues are dealt with in the physical layer or the file layer. So, let's first understand what is modulation. So, the actual meaning of the term modulation is variation. Here, the properties or attributes of one of the signals are varied by another one. The signal whose properties are varied is a high frequency signal called the carrier signal. And the signal that causes these changes is the low frequency data signal, which is also known as modulating signal. Now, in simple words, the high frequency carrier signal carries the information contained in the low frequency modulating or data signal. Now, why do we use high frequency carrier signal? Or why don't we transfer the information directly using the low frequency data signal? Which means, why do we use modulation at all? So, there are various reasons for this. The first one being length of the antenna. It'll be smaller for high frequencies and it'll be bigger for lower frequencies. The second is narrowing the band of the signal. Low frequency means wider band and this particular band will be more susceptible to noise because it'll be wider. And high frequency means narrower band and this particular band will be more immune to noise. The third reason is power radiated by the antenna. It is low for low frequency signal, thus this signal may simply get lost after traveling a small distance. Thus due to all these reasons, modulation is important. That is, you have to use very high frequency signal to transfer your data. Now, in case of Bluetooth Low Energy and Bluetooth, we use 2.4 GHz ISM band for carrier signal. And the reason for using this band is covered in a previous video on this channel. The link for that is in the description below. So, we have covered what is modulation and why modulation is needed. Now, let's shift our focus to the various modulation techniques. You can change either the amplitude or the frequency or the phase of the carrier signal. Thus, you get amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation respectively. Now, the resulting modulated signal is then transmitted to the receiver where it is demodulated to reconstruct the original signal. BLE uses Gaussian frequency shift keying modulation technique. So, let's first understand what is frequency shift keying. So, frequency shift means we are modulating or shifting the frequency of the carrier and keying comes from the days of telegraphy. Now, if the system were manually operated, then you could say that each time the operator pressed the key, the frequency shifted by a known value. However, there is no manual operation, yet the term keying persisted. Thus, FSK is nothing but modulation of the frequency of the carrier signal. Now, frequency shift keying encodes data as a series of frequency changes in a carrier, which means that a binary 1 is encoded by increasing the carrier frequency and 0 is encoded by decreasing the carrier frequency to a known value. Now, some of the advantages of FSK are you can fairly easily design a transmitter and receiver. Also, the noise signals change the amplitude of a signal, making frequency modulation relatively more immune to noise than amplitude modulation technique. One of the great challenges of FSK can be understood by examining the transmission of a zero followed by a one. It requires the signal to instantaneously jump from a sinusoid of frequency FC minus FD to FC plus FD. But FT is nothing but frequency deviation. Now, this sharp switching generates higher frequency components at the output, resulting in a wider output spectrum or significant amounts of out-of-band energy. 
To combat this problem, we filter the modulating signal using a Gaussian filter. Then this filtered signal modifies the carrier signal. Due to this, the resulting transitions are gradual and smoother. Thus, Gaussian filtering is a standard way to reduce the spectral width and it is often referred to as pulse shaping technique. Now considering the previous example of switching from 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, in case of ordinary non-filtered FSK, this jump causes the modulated waveform to change rapidly, which introduces large out-of-band spectrum. If the pulse is changed going from 0 to 1 as 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and so on and so forth, and ultimately, if this smoother pulse is used to determine the carrier frequency, then the out-of-band spectrum is reduced by a significant amount. A narrow spectral bandwidth also ensures reduction in the interference with other frequencies. Now the most basic GFSK implementation is called two-level GFSK. Here, two different frequencies are used to encode symbol 0 and 1. To transmit 1, the carrier frequency is increased by a certain deviation, and to transmit 0, the carrier frequency is decreased by the same deviation. The rate at which the data is sent through the system is called the symbol rate. It takes several cycles to determine the frequency of the underlying carrier and whether a 0 or 1 was transmitted. Thus, the symbol rate is a very small fraction of the carrier frequency. Thus, even if the carrier frequency is roughly 2.4 billion cycles per second, the symbol rate is only 1 or 2 million symbols per second. Using a 4 GFSK modulation scheme, double the amount of data can be sent across at the same symbol rate by using 4 distinct symbols instead of 2. However, this increase comes at a cost as 4 GFSK requires more complex transmitters and receivers. Now in case of BLE specifically, 2 GFSK or binary GFSK is used where a zero is encoded to negative frequency deviation of at least 185 kHz and one is coded to a positive frequency deviation of at least the same amount. At just the physical layer, BLE, which is version 4, is capable of transmitting 1 million symbols per second. This translates to 1 Mbps, assuming an encoding of 1 bit per symbol, which is the standard for BLE. So that's it for today's video. Do check out the entire playlist that covers Bluetooth and BLE related topics. The link for that is in the description below. So I'll see you next time with more topics related to embedded systems and wireless tech. Like and share the video and subscribe to the channel. Bye world!